My name is Hans Laufer. I'm a, re a research professor at the University of Connecticut because I retired a while ago. Well, I went to City College in New York as an undergraduate uh, and uh, got my PhD at Cornell University uh, with a professor named Marcus Singer. And uh, that's very important because the way I got here is he told me that he wanted, he expected me to go to Woods Hole to take the embryology course, which I did in 1956. I was uh, in it. I finished my PhD in 57, so it, I was a senior graduate student, and he said, I must go. And so I, I took it fairly seriously, and uh, it, was, it was not easy because uh, I didn't have a car. I took a train from Ithaca, New York, to New York City, and then took the train up from New York City to Woods Hole. And of course, it's now the racing track. There was a train that went to the ferry, sta ferry station. Well. I came to the embryology course, which was in, in the old main, uh, in, in the old uh, main building. And uh, it was a, a very primitive building, but the, the specimens were right in the middle of the, the tanks were right in the middle of the room. And uh, so we were right Right there, the, the specimens were right, right with all the other students. And uh, the course was populated by an amazing group of people. Like uh, Mac Edge was the chairman at the time, but Edge Willing and Jim Ebert, John Saunders, uh, among others, were, were some of the teachers. And of course, it was a good, great opportunity t to make friends with these with these faculty people. In fact, uh, oh, there was a a a, 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 a junior instructor named uh, um, his name was Malcolm Steinberg, and we it, we, we developed a relationship that he was closer to me than my brother was. And uh, I did my research, actually I did my research project in the course with, with Malcolm Steinberg, uh, this junior instructor, but uh, our entire careers overlapped after that because we, we both got our degrees about the same time and we ended up in Baltimore uh, with Jim Ebert who was in the course, and that's where I met him first. But uh, um, we, we were both in, in the same, same institution at the same time. Uh, we were both postdocs for two years, and we were offered jobs by the biology department at Johns Hopkins at the same time. And so we overlapped uh, more than seven years as colleagues starting with the embryology course. But there were other things about the, the beginning of that, that course. Uh, for example, I, I was uh, uh, the, the only student who had uh, the, EG, I, I got the E.G. Conklin Fellowship Award. And uh, then uh, I, I also did a post-course research, which was very important. That is, I stay, after the course was over, I had a chance to stay over and, and do more research. Yes. So it was really a, a, an, an amazing experience. Can you tell me about that? We had a mess hall where, where now the ecology building is, and everybody ate in that same mess hall. So we, 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 we basically got to know everybody. Uh, in the embryology course, uh, both students and faculty, and and other people who were at at the MBL. For example, there was there was a, a porch, and Otto Levy, 
was a very famous scientist, and he always sat on, on, on the porch after the meal, and would, would, people would go up to him and, and have conversations with him. He was really, it was wonderful to talk to these people. And uh, it, was, it was a marvelous experience. And like I said, we, we became friends with, with the faculty and, and the students. So, amazing place. It was wonderful. Well, actually, we, 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 uh, we helped design the, 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 new, uh, the, the new Swope building, and it, was, it made it even better. And uh, it was wonderful to teach there. Well, actually, when, when, I, when I was a student, Jim Ebert, who was lecturing in the course, said, I was a student in this course 10 years ago, and now I'm teaching. And it, that's exactly what happened to me. I, became a, I, I, I came back 10 years after I took the course. I came back as a, as a teacher. It's an amazing course, in fact, we had uh, we had one student who uh, won the Nobel Prize, so we were t it was a pleasure to teach all of them. But he was uh, he got a special award. Anyway, we decided to come back. My wife and I decided we liked it here, so. A few years later, the director was Philip Armstrong, and it was before. Actually, we had Friday night lectures, but we didn't have the uh, the, the wine and cheese uh, on Friday after after the lecture. We uh, we had invitations to the, the Armstrongs uh, once or twice during the summer, and that's where I met Peter Armstrong. He was. Uh, Helping, helping dispense the wine. He was the bartender. And a couple of years later, Phil Armstrong, the director, asked me, uh, this is when I, I got my job at, uh, at, uh, at the biology department at Johns Hopkins. He said, is Johns Hopkins a good place to send graduate students to? And I said, yes, it is. And he sent not, not only Peter, but his brother, to be a graduate student at Johns Hopkins. I'm not sure that it was based on my opinion alone, but uh, I felt I was a participant. And Pete Armstrong was a student of Mel Steinberg's. The other thing, I, I, met, I met people like Keith, Keith Porter and Houston Swift helped my, my, my uh, he was uh, from the University of Chicago, Houston. He was a cell biologist. And these were the people who, who founded the cell biology, or the organization, the uh, American Association of Cell Biology. And a couple of years, when, when they were founding this, they were looking for members, and they recruited me to be a member. I was one of the first 300 members of the cell society for American Society for Cell Biology, through this connection of Woods Hole. One of the neighbors was Harlan, uh, Harlan Halverson. I showed him around Woods Hole when his first summer was here. And uh, we became friends. And uh, I did a sabbatical with him after that. And he became one of the directors of the laboratory in later years. And we shared the lab for a couple of summers. So, you know, every, everybody's kind of interconnected here. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, really, it's really great. Somewhere along the line, I, I got older and got appointed to things. I became a, a member of the uh, uh, executive committee, and I became a member of the advisory council to, to, uh, to Paul Gross, who was a director. 
one of the problems we needed to discuss was uh, uh, he needed a child care center. And he was going to uh, use Drew House, the place where we lived the first summer, uh, as, as the ch child center. But the only thing that he said that stood in its way is it was such an old building, had so much lead paint in it, it wasn't really suited for children. So I suggested that they put the children's facility out on uh, where, the, where the cottages were, and he did that. My first sabbatical was in 1972, was in Stockholm. They treated me so well that when I came back, I said to myself and to other people, I said, we're not, we, we have a lot of foreign visitors here at MBL, but we don't do anything special to make them welcome. And so my wife was active on the, on the uh, MBL Associates, and we started a, a, uh, a welcoming uh, committee, and uh, we had several events for, for, taking, for, for welcoming foreigners and making them feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh, part of it was on regeneration of limb regeneration in things like salamanders. Uh, but I had a minor in insect physiology and endocrinology from, from a, a, a person named Howard Schneiderman, who was a faculty member at Cornell and who used to come here too. And he, in fact, he taught in the he taught in the invertebrate uh, invertebrate course. I worked on insects uh, during the year, and during the summer I worked on crustacea. And uh, one time uh, I I I wrote a grant application, and they didn't approve it to work on insects. So I switched over to working on crustacea full-time for the rest of my life, and I've been doing that ever since. We've made a number of interesting discoveries, like, well, insects, the, the endocrinology of insects was very well known when I, uh, well, it was being discovered when, as I was working on insects. And it was clear to me that crustacea are very similar to, to insects. And so they had to have, well, they have the same molting hormone that was known. In fact, the, the molting hormone was originally known as acrust ecdysin. The, the common name now for, for the molting hormone is ecdysin, but in those days it was crust ecdysin. But there's a second hormone that's very important to uh, to insects that's called the juvenile hormone. And I knew that from, from the, the, the evidence that was in the literature, including data from Howard Schneiderman's lab, was that crustacea should have a juvenile hormone, but nobody knew what it was. And so we set about to find out what it is, and we did find it. And so we, we, we discovered that crustacea a crustacean hormone. The insects have about uh, five different uh, mo uh, variants of that molecule, the juvenile hormone. But the crustacea have so far only found one, the one we discovered. And the important thing is that it's not only a, a hormone that uh, causes, uh, that that's, it involves the development of the insect, or, or crustacean in this case, uh, but it's also the reproductive hormone. And so we got a patent on uh, enhancing the reproduction on shrimp, which is a, uh, a, was, was a critical discovery. And uh, we, uh, we were told by, well, the university, actually, University of Connecticut, it was the first patent that the University of Connecticut had in biology. And now, uh, more recently, we found that, that uh, pollutants 
have the same kind of uh, activity. They, they, they have a juvenile hormone activity. And they also uh, actually also affect the, the molting hormone activity. And then right now we're looking at the receptors, the molecular basis of their action. And uh, so it, uh, these are pollutants. Uh, the best known um, among the group of uh, pollutants we're looking at are, is bisphenol A, which is, uh, these are pollutants that come out of plastics and detergents. And the animals bring us back because actually the, uh, the, the larvae, the larvae are, are very temperature dependent and, and we can get cold, cooled water here. Uh, it's hard to get the exact temperature just right, but uh, I found, well, that's an interesting story. We, we had a, 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 a huge lobster die-off in Long Island Sound in 1999. And when they told us what the temperature of the, long, uh, of the bottom of the water in Long Island Sound was, I said, I never could keep animals in, 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 in summer water in August at the MBL. They died off unless, until we got cooled water. So I knew it was the temperature that was killing me. Most of, most of the reason why they were dying, I could tell that right away. But there, there are other factors that are uh, affecting the lobsters. And part of it is, are these pollutants. We ran, uh, we ran some experiments, and we just published them, that uh, small amounts of these compounds being being fed to the to the larvae will are toxic, and the the ones who survive will uh, the ones who survive are abnormal in their development. They don't develop properly because the, these compounds have juvenile hormone activity. How it affected my life is we decided after a while, well, we were renting space here for, I mean, we were f renting housing for, for about 15 years. I taught, I taught in the embryology course for the last five, that's five of those 15 years. And then I decided we, we need to buy a house or build one. So we, we looked and we got one. And uh, the, the house now is 36 years old. And uh, my kids, we raised a family here, especially when they, when they went off to school. They spent their summers here. One of my sons actually worked in my lab uh, for a couple of summers, and then uh, after, after science school. And then uh, he actually worked uh, in the embryology course as a, as a course assistant. And he worked with uh, Joan Ruderman as a dishwasher, among other things. And then the next year he went, he worked with uh, Luigi Mastriani who was here, had a house here, and uh, he also be befriended, uh, my son befriended uh, Luigi's son, so they were buddies. But uh, Luigi Mastriani was a, was a, uh, 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 was a gyne uh, obstetrics and gynecology specialist at the University of Pennsylvania. And my son worked in his lab here at Woods Hole. And then uh, decided to go to medical school and worked with Luigi at the uh, University of Pennsylvania. And he's now a professor of obstetrics and gynecology at Harvard University. Well, it means, it, it's, means a lot. I mean, it, it's how we do our research. And the courses are, are just fantastic. At, at some institutions, people are competing for, 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 for important positions or manipulating for, 
for for power and and space and all those good things and uh, here everybody's just a member of the community they they help each other there's a lot of collaboration a lot of interaction going on they'll discuss people will discuss almost anything with you and be helpful <laughs>